I'm curious, like you don't do too many long form interviews. What made you want to do Caller Daddy today? Well, I think you and your listeners have really got this thing right, which is one of the best ways to communicate with people is to be real, you know, and to talk about the things that people really care about. I mean, what I love about what you do is that your voice and in, in your show is really about your listeners. And I think especially now, this is a moment in the country and in life where people really want to know they're seen and heard and, and that they're part of a community, that they're not out there alone. And, um, and so I'm really glad to be with you. All right, guys. So we got to react to what is yet again another scripted cringe and softball interview from Kamala Harris in which she fails to knock it out the park, right? It doesn't matter how soft of the interview it is. She never does an interview where you come away thinking, wow, this woman should be commander in chief of the United States. OK, and this interview is on the call her daddy podcast. OK, this was a highly anticipated interview because the media was hyping it up, mainly because of the raunchy nature of this podcast, a podcast targeted towards young women, teaching them how to give the good guac guac right which you know hey i'm not necessarily mad at <laughs> i think that's a valuable skill for women i mean you know what they say there's nothing like a woman with a good head on her shoulders right <laughs> so i mean the concept of the podcast in and of itself i'm not necessarily mad at it because there's a lot of men in marriages that are not satisfied. They're just not, right? So, hey, if women can learn how to satisfy their men more, then men will be in a happier place, right? So, again, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that at all. I think what a lot of people are upset about, okay, let's get serious here, is the fact that Kamala Harris went on this podcast in which, of course, because of the target audience, women she's gonna be crying victimhood right this was a victimhood fest unsurprisingly however um women in this country generally speaking are, are not victims right compared to how women are treated in the rest of the world right the women in the united states of america just like black folks and all the other so-called minorities the gays the trans all these people that love to cry victimhood they're not victims right you're not a victim okay but Unfortunately, in politics, what Democrats thrive based off of is trying to sell people this idea that they are victims because they can't get special rights and privileges, right? Because that's what they're fighting for. It doesn't matter which minority group it is, right? Pick one, okay? When you listen to them talk and the things that concern them the most, right, the rights they're fighting for, they're not actually fighting for rights. They're fighting for special rights and privileges, okay? And that is the case with women and, and again what people are upset about is the fact that on this podcast Kamala Harris decided to take the time to cry victimhood while we have real victims in this country that are suffering like the victims of Hurricane Helene and Georgia North Carolina East Tennessee some parts of Virginia those are the real victims okay and instead of doing her job as vice president okay and getting them the help that they need no 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 she spent time on this podcast, boohoo, whining, and crying, talking about how bad it is to be a woman in this country, okay? And that's what I want to talk about here, okay? This interview from Kamala Harris, of course, was scripted. And you know it was scripted because of questions like this that were asked during this interview. Take a look. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest conversations in this year's election revolves around a woman's body. Mm -hmm. Yep. I want to take a moment. Mm -hmm. And can we try mm -hmm. to think of any law that gives the government the power to make a decision? I know what you're going to ask. About <laughs> a man's body. Let's no. No. Is there no. any law? No. Flashback. Think of any laws that give government the power to make decisions about uh, the male body? Um. I'm happy to answer a uh, more specific question. But Male versus female. There are um, medical procedures. Okay. That, the government get, that the government has the power to make a decision about a man's oh, body? I thought you were asking about medical procedures no, that are I, unique to I, men. I can, I, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat the question. Can you think of any laws that give the government the power to make decisions about the male body? 
I'm not a, I'm not a thinking of any right now. Yeah, so you've seen that, you heard that, okay? 100% scripted question, planted by Kamala Harris's team, telling this woman, hey, ask Kamala Harris this really silly question about whether or not there are any laws that control a man's body, in which there are, right? It's called selective service, right? It's called a draft, okay? In which the government tells men that, hey, you have to use your body to go overseas and fight a war, right, in order to protect women, okay, which is something that men have had to do throughout all of history, but women historically have not had to do this, but for whatever reason, they think they have some type of unique victimhood, okay, because of abortion, of course, which is what they're going to talk about here in this clip that I want to react to, but again, I want you guys to understand, right, they really believe that, oh, well, it's unique that we have these laws that are trying to control women's bodies because we can't get abortions. When, again, throughout all of history, men have been sent by governments, forced by governments to go fight. And if you refuse, you know, in some cases, uh, you weren't allowed to live. There were fatal consequences for a man refusing to sacrifice his body on behalf of protecting women, right? But see, again, this is the type of stuff that because we live in the 21st century, uh, people don't appreciate the sacrifices of men enough, okay? A lot of these women don't understand that without men, women would not enjoy the luxuries that they enjoy. I mean, that podcast studio, everything that these women are currently enjoying right now is because of a man, right? Because a man built it, okay? And that is true in 99.999% of everything that we enjoy in life, okay? It's because men paved the way for it to happen, and especially when you're talking about so-called women's rights, okay, the rights that women enjoy in this country is because men were tolerant enough to say, hey, women deserve to have a voice, which is not a luxury that most women on the planet can say that they have, okay? But American women enjoy this unique luxury, but we keep hearing about how tough it is to be a woman in this country and how to have all their rights taken away and yada, 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 this, that, and the other. And I look around at the rest of the world, I'm like... Shoot, the women over there, they got a lot worse off than the women over here. It seems to me that the women in the United States are ungrateful for the fact that they live in a country where they have the same rights that men have and they don't even have to go fight a war to protect them, right? It's amazing how that works. You have all the same rights as a man, but you don't even have to fight for it, right? You don't have to go die for them, okay? But yet, somehow you're a victim. Somehow it's so tough to be a woman in the United States. Somehow there's so much misogyny and bigotry and sexism in this country. It's amazing how that works. It really is. So I'm going to go ahead and get into this clip. I promise I'm not going to make you guys suffer too much through this cringe fest. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. I do want to focus on abortion for a moment because two years ago, Roe v. Wade was overturned and women mm -hmm. lost their constitutional right to an abortion. I put out an episode about it. I flew to North Carolina. Yeah. I went to a preferred women's health center. I met with women that mm -hmm. were getting screamed at and chanted at and called baby killers. And it was the most eye-opening experience I've yeah. ever had because I am a privileged white woman that lives in Los Angeles. And I am so aware of that. Um, wow. Wow. Again, just flat out left-wing lunacy here i'm a privileged white woman she thinks that abortion is a constitutional right and see that's the problem with this conversation and this is why i can't stand having this conversation because there's so much misinformation and brainwashing around this issue uh again women believe that they have a right to terminate life you do not have a right to terminate life you just don't there's nothing in the constitution that protects a woman's right to have an abortion but again, this tells you how effective the propaganda is from the Democrats. They made women think that, hey, I, th this is my right. I got a right to do this. And that is not true. There's nowhere in the Constitution that says that you have a right to terminate life. Okay? There's nowhere in the Constitution that states that. But this is what they do every single time they want to get their left-wing extremists on board with their agenda. They tell the left-wing extremists that, hey, well, you're entitled to this. Like, for example, healthcare. They say the same thing. Healthcare is a right. No, it's not. Healthcare is not a right either. Okay? None of these things that these people are putting out there are right. But again, these people think they're entitled to stuff when they're not. They're not. So again, that's the biggest problem here is that these women are brainwashed into believing that they're entitled to abortions. And that's just simply not the case. 
I understand that a lot of the younger generation sees things online mm-hmm. and is like, what is right? What is wrong? What is real? What is not? Can you explain and talk about what is actually happening to abortion access right now in this country? Yeah. So again, I thank you for what you've been doing and at the earliest stage of this and following the stories. So, you know, on public policy, I often tell my team, look, I don't want to hear about public policy is a fancy kind of speech or, or, or paper. Tell me how it'll affect a real person. So let's talk about how it affects a real person. The majority of women who receive abortion care are mothers. So if she's in a state, and by the way, every state in the South, except for Virginia, has an abortion ban, okay? Um, so imagine she's in a state with an abortion ban. One out of three women are, by the way, in our country. And she's a mom. So she's going to have to figure out, one, God help her if she has affordable child care. God help her if she has paid leave. And then she's going to have to go to the airport, stand in a TSA line, sit on a plane next to a perfect stranger to go to a city where she's never been to receive the care she needs. She's going to probably have to get right back on that plane because she's got those kids. Her best friend's probably not with her because that's who's taking care of the kids. To get back in that TSA line, to get back on a plane, to go home. And that's all if they can even afford the plane ticket or the bus ticket. Exactly. Listen to this nonsense. Listen to this victimhood fest. Oh, boo Women that want to get an abortion, they got to get a plane ticket. They got to get in the TSA line. Oh, my God. So terrible. They got to sit on a plane next to a stranger. Oh, my God. They got to go to a, another city they've never been to before. Oh, my God. It's so terrible. That's so terrible. It's so bad. It's so bad, right? (laughs) Yes, I am laughing. Absolutely, I'm laughing. Because that's why I'm at at this point when it comes to this conversation. I'm laughing at these people. Because again, historically speaking, the plight of a young man was to fight and die for this country, right? To, To get on a plane, to go to a country that you've never been to before to fight a war, right? So, again, I don't think that anything that Kamala Harris is talking about right now compares to that, right? Which is something that women don't have to do. They don't have to do that. But you want me to feel bad about, oh, a woman has to go to another state to get an abortion? Really? You know how a woman avoids having to do all that? Keep her legs closed. Stop sleeping around. And if you're going to sleep around, be responsible about it, right? Use contraceptives. It's really that simple. Birth control. There's a lot of it out there, okay? And they're 99% effective if you use it correctly. It's entirely avoidable. But again, if it does happen, you want me to feel bad about you having to go to another state to get an abortion, right? As if that's such a terrible thing. To me, it sounds like a minor inconvenience. Again, especially compared to the things that men have historically had to go through. So I don't want to sit here and and listen to these women boohoo whine and cry as if their circumstances are uniquely terrible because it's not. Exactly. Because when Roe v. Wade was overturned, I remember my DMs were flooded with yeah. thousands of women mm-hmm. begging me to help. And yeah. it's overwhelming. And mm-hmm. I can't even imagine, I'm saying that in front of you, but it's, it's overwhelming. And I remember people begging me like, I just need to afford a bus ticket so I can get out of this abortion desert that I live in in the South so I can get to a state. But they can't even, you know what I mean? So it's like these people are literally landlocked into a position that they don't want to be. And and here's the thing. Here's the thing is that you don't have to abandon your faith or deeply held beliefs to agree. The government shouldn't be telling her what to do. If she chooses, she'll talk to her priest, her pastor, her rabbi, her imam, but not the government telling you what to do. And that's what's so outrageous about it, is a bunch of these guys up in these state capitals are writing these decisions, 
because they somehow have decided that they're in a better position to tell you what's in your best interest than you are to know what's in your own best interest. It is so rich listening to the exact same people that tried to force an experimental vaccine into your arms. If you wanted to continue to feed your family, if you wanted to travel outside the country or come into the country, if you wanted to do anything, Okay, if you want to be a part of normal society, y'all remember uh, vaccine passports? Y'all remember that? <laughs> Restaurants require you to show your papers, your vaccine papers in order to eat out. You remember that? That, that? That's what was happening in these liberal cities. Kamala Harris was in an administration that was responsible for that. She was in charge of that. Telling you what you got to do with your body. Being one of those very decision makers that was telling people what they had to do with their body. She was the government telling you what you had to do. And now all of a sudden, she's against that when it comes to uh, abortion, though. All of a sudden, oh, what? the government doesn't have a right to say what you should do with your body. Again, unless we're talking about an experimental vaccine, right? Which Kamala Harris was totally fine with the government telling people what they had to do with their bodies. Again, it's amazing how that works. The hypocrisy is stunning here. It really is. It's outrageous. It's outrageous. I mean, daddy gang, to put it in um, our TikTok terms, um, I have seen girls on the street walk up to men and be like, do you know where a tampon goes? Do you know how many tampons we use? Do you even know how, like, do you know what a X or Y or Z is of a part of our, and they don't know the answer. I was the first. Again, this is rich. The hypocrisy is stunning. This is a question that she should be asking Tim Walsh. Okay, because apparently Tim Walsh doesn't know where tampon goes because he thinks that tampons belong in boys' bathrooms, right? Clearly, he's not aware of basic biology, okay? But again, this is the party that can't tell you what a woman is, but yet now all of a sudden, they figured out what a woman is when it comes to this topic. This is comedy. Vice president or president to ever in office uh, go to a reproductive health care clinic, ever. Really? Yes. Yes. And that's her biggest yes. accomplishment, I didn't know guys. that, but I guess that... That's her biggest accomplishment. Her biggest accomplishment is going to an abortion clinic, right? This is what Democrats state when they talk about Kamala Harris's accomplishments. I'm so serious. Listen to Elizabeth Warren talk about Kamala Harris and her accomplishments. What do you think has been her biggest accomplishment since she's been vice president? Oh, I have to say, uh, since the Dobbs opinion, the way that she has rallied women uh, and friends of women, also called men, uh, around this country on the issue of abortion and just taking it home. Uh, first uh, vice president in history to visit an abortion clinic, go get them. You know, she's, she's someone who talks openly about things that were kind of challenging for some people to talk about. But also to talk abortion about it with was tough. President Biden didn't even mention the word abortion in the State right. of the Union. But Vice President Harris has, and she's talked about it both with compassion, but also with a sense of what is right. How can we be a country that half of America lost rights because of an extremist Supreme Court put in place by Donald Trump? Yeah, so you seen that, you heard that, okay? I'm not going through the rest of this interview, right? I just want to show you guys uh, the victimhood fest that this interview was, just how ridiculous that it was. But um, this is all Kamala Harris has to run on right now, right? This is the only thing keeping her campaign alive, okay? Her biggest accomplishment is visiting an abortion a clinic, right? That's her biggest accomplishment is VP. They can't tell you anything else that Kamala Harris has done positive outside of visiting an abortion clinic and i wouldn't even characterize that as a positive thing okay definitely an immoral thing for sure not positive but again this is something that democrats consider to be one of her biggest accomplishments tells you everything you need to know about what she's actually done which is not really much okay in regards to positive things for this country so yeah with that being said uh as you guys should be able to tell I'm tired of playing defense on this topic, okay? I, I really am. I'm actually tired of talking about this topic, but I know uh, that this topic is a big topic, even though I don't want it to be a big topic. But I'm no longer going to sugarcoat it anymore because I'm sick and tired of having to capitulate to emotional women who think that their special rights and privileges are more important 
than the rest of the country and the other issues that we're dealing with, right? And, and that's just simply not the case. And I'm not going to pretend like it's the case. Um, at this point, this issue is an issue uh, that's left up to the states. Uh, democracy is happening in the states, which is something that Democrats claim that they agree with, except when they don't agree with it, which is right now. They, they don't agree with democracy. They're literally fighting against democracy in the states. And again, the crazy part about this is that, um, you know, if most people agree with Democrats on this issue, then they don't have to worry about it, right? If this issue in regards to abortion, if access to it is so popular, if it's as popular as they claim, then democracy will take care of the issue, which in some cases it has, right? But clearly Democrats, the authoritarian Democrats can't accept that. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.